so in the last class we have discussed what is a metal casting and what is a I mean how the metal casting is done what are the basic steps that we are uh, that are required in the metal casting process and different terms that are used in metal casting so we had a overview of metal casting process in the last class in the last lecture now we look in detail what each of these are the first thing is pattern in the last class we have seen what is a pattern pattern is pattern is a replica of the final casting which is to be made or which is to be manufactured so in detail if you look into pattern what it is is a principal tool during the casting process obviously there is a principal tool because that is something which gives us the final product final casting so it is a replica of the object the main modifications are the addition of the pattern allowances and the provision of core prints so if it is a hollow component for example I need to manufacture a hollow component so it should support a core now that's what it is given here so there should be provision for the core, core prints the quality of the casting produced depends upon the material of the pattern so what type of material using whether it is a Nudam pattern or any other pattern pattern made of any other material so this is something which defines the quality of the casting the cost of the pattern and related equipment are reflected in the cost of the casting the use of an expensive pattern is justified when the quantity of castings required is substantial so whenever we are going with an expensive pattern we should ensure that number of products produced using this pattern should be more so then only it is beneficial suppose your pattern cost is uh, huge you are incurring so much in manufacturing your pattern in preparing your pattern and using this pattern if you produce very few components or one component and that that's not beneficial so that's not uh, uh, that's not economic so if the cost incurred in the pattern is more we should ensure that the number of components produced should be more in order to reduce the cost of the manufactured products so in detail that's what pattern is so we can have a look of pattern here it's something um, a plate here which divides two half of uh, two halves of the pattern see uh, one on the cope side and the one on the drag side which you have seen in the video in the first lecture that's what it is so what are the functions of the pattern so we know that the pattern is replica of the final product but along with this what else is to be uh, what are the other functions of the pattern so pattern obviously it has to produce cavity that's the main function of the pattern but what are the other functions apart from this just have a look into this prepares the mold cavity for the purpose of casting obviously there's a main purpose of it it needs to prepare a cavity so that's why we are using a pattern it's a replica of the final product so we need to have a cavity pattern may contain projections known as core prints so this is also what we have seen in the first slide then runner gates and risers used for feeding molten metal in the mold cavity may form a part of the pattern see in the video what we have seen riser gates and runners they were separately done holes were made separately in the sand but you can have a pattern in conjunction with runner gates and risers so all these can be accommodated within the pattern a pattern can be made such a way that it has runner gates and risers so if a pattern contains all these things 
then uh, of, of course uh, if it has all these things so the functions of pattern are more in this case so so it is also serving as a runner gate uh, it is also serving as a riser patterns properly made and having finished and smooth surfaces reduce casting defects obviously if uh, patterns are made uh, if if patterns are made cautiously okay if precarious precarious uh, if you're very precarious about the pattern manufacturing then obviously the final casting will be also has minimal defects the properly constructed pattern minimizes the overall cost of the castings so it means a pattern should also manufactured in such a way or prepared in such a way or how to choose a pattern in such a way that overall cost of your final product should be reduced overall cost should be cut off what is the material of the pattern the usual material most of the cases we go with the material wood so some cases it is metal and plastics mostly we go with the wooden pattern so metal patterns and plastic patterns are also used to a great extent the most commonly used pattern material is wood out of this again so why it is easily shaped and relatively cheap obviously the cost of your cost cost of your wooden pattern will be obviously cheap when compared to the metal and plastic pattern but there is a disadvantage what is the disadvantage disadvantage is its absorption of moisture obviously wood will absorb most more, more moisture which can cause the distortion dimensional changes obviously when a wooden pattern is placed is used to form a cavity when it absorbs sand uh, when it when it absorbs moisture from the molding sand there is a chance that the wood uh, will warp there is a dimensional changes there may be dimensional changes in the pattern which finally results in the dimensional changes of your pattern obviously that will result in the dimensional changes of your cavity finally affects your casting so in order to avoid this proper seasoning proper seasoning and upkeep of the wood is almost a prerequisite so the wood has to be season in such a way that it will not absorb any moisture content from the molding sand so that there will not be any dimensional changes of it which affects your final casting see this pattern shows all or see riser runner gate all are incorporated within the pattern so this entire pattern is having all these things now next pattern allowances what is the pattern allowance so it is a vital feature as it affects the dimensional characteristics of the casting when a pattern is produced certain allowances must be given on the sizes specified in the finished component so let's see what are that allowances these allowances are to be chosen correctly so that your final casting is as per the dimensions what we are required what are these allowances so first allowance is shrinkage or contraction allowance what is shrinkage allowance uh, first we have a look into what are the allowances then we can analyze each of this separately so second one we see something called as a draft or taper allowance and third one is machining or finish allowance I would say machining elements, distortion or camber elements, wrapping elements. 
so these are the five allowances majorly given to the pattern so what is shrinkage allowance so what happens when we are using a pattern for example i need to manufacture a component of a particular dimensions now the pattern is made of the same dimensions and i made a cavity in the molding sand and this cavity is filled with molten metal but this molten metal will shrink during solidification and also it will shrink during cooling so liquid itself shrink or the volume of the liquid reduces when the temperature of your liquid comes down so there is a shrinkage now and when solidification takes place when phase change takes place from liquid to solid then the shrinkage takes place during phase change also so these are the two shrinkages that we can see in the screen here one is a liquid shrinkage when the temperature of your molten metal comes down the volume of your molten metal will be reduced that is your shrinkage is happening because of reduction in the temperature and second one is solid shrinkage when solidification takes place again the size will reduce the volume will reduce this is called as solid shrinkage so if the dimensions are x for example length of the component is x or x i would say it as 100 mm for example i'm say uh, if you are taking an example which has 100 mm length a component should have a length of 100 mm now when you make a cavity of exactly 100 mm and pour the molten metal after solidifying it may get you a size of 98 mm because 2 mm shrinkage happened now we have to ensure that this has to be compensated so how can we compensate this the cavity should be made bigger than the actual dimensions of the product so that when it shrinks we get the right size of the product but how much it is let's see how much it is so this is not same for all the materials it depends upon what material you're using for example the molten metal which is poured is a gray cast iron if the dimension is up to two feet that is 24 inches two feet is something 24 inches so up to 24 inches the shrinkage allowance that has to be given is 0.125 inch per feet per foot so if you are making a length of 12 mm then the 12 m sorry 12 inches sorry 12 inches now this 12 inches length should have a cavity of 12.125 inch 12 inches is something one feet one foot and for this one foot there is shrinkage of 0.125 inch okay you can see clearly here it is 0.125 inch per foot per 12 inches so suppose if a dimension your length of the component is 12 inches that is one foot then you have to make it 12.125 inch that's what it says in case of gray cast iron if it is 2 to 4 inch it is 0 0.105 if it is over 4 feet it is 0 0.03 0 0.83 inch per foot so similar for, for similarly for cast steel we have other shrinkage elements so for cast steel you find it as much higher because it will shrink more you see here point point two five one inch per foot it is more in the case of cast steel the shrinkage is more so you have to compensate more the compensation is 0.251 inch per foot that is per 12 inches aluminium again we have magnesium we have because these are the popular metals that we use in the metal casting process so for additional for different materials we have different shrinkage allowances but some popular allowances are given here in the slide so let's see a small 
component. For example, I need to make a casting which has the dimensions as shown in figure. See in this case, see in this case, 18 inch. So all these dimensions are in inches. Okay, all these are inches. So 18 means 18 inch. 14 means 14 inch. 8 means 8 inch. So the length, breadth, and the height of this component are 18, 14, and 8 respectively. Length is 18, breadth is 14, and height is 8. So all are in inches and also we have a hole in this block which has a diameter of 6 inches. Now I need to have a casting of these dimensions. I need to manufacture a casting which has the dimensions shown in this figure, this dimensions. So what I will do is I need to make a cavity now. I need to make a cavity. So I'll make a cavity of 18.2 inch rather than 18 a cavity. If I need to make a cavity then that's nothing but this elements given to the pattern now. I need to make a bigger pattern. So I need to make a bigger pattern in order to make a bigger cavity. So how much it is? So already I told you on the previous screen we can see here that is 0.125 up to 2 feet so if it is 18 inch that is within 2 feet so the limit is within 2 feet so how much is the compensation it is 0.125 inch so you can see here point one two five inch per foot so that is by 12 inches so for 18 inches it will be 0.1875 inch so that 0.1875 inch is rounded to 0.2 inches. Okay, that 0.1875 is rounded to 0.2 inches. So similarly for 14, again it is in the limit of 2 feet. So 0.125 inch per foot. So that is uh, per 12 inches. For 14 inches it will be 0.146 again. It is rounded to 0.15. Similarly, for 8, it is 0 0.833, 0 0.0833 inch, rounded up to 0 0.09 inch. For 6 inch, again, it is rounded up to 0 0.07 inch, where the exact value is 0 0.0625 inch. Now, let's see the pattern dimensions. In order to have the component of these dimensions, after giving the shrinkage allowances, because the shrink Shrinkage takes place. Okay, shrinkage takes place. So in order to compensate this shrinkage, I need to manufacture a pattern or I need to use a pattern which has the dimensions shown here. Which has the dimensions shown here at the bottom. See, instead of 14 inch, I need to make it 14.15 inch breadth, 18.2 inch length, 8.09 inch height and 5.93 inch hole instead of 6 inch obviously it is a hole that's why the dimension have been reduced because what happens after shrinkage this material portion will shrink and therefore the diameter of the hole will be increased where it is a hollow portion obviously the size of the hole has been reduced to 5.93 we cannot increase the size of the hole material will get reduced so that the hollow portion will get increased so that's uh, th that is the reason why it is 5.93 okay so this is how the shrinkage elements is given to your pattern so what is the shrinkage elements shrinkage elements is something when a molten metal is solidified it reduces in volume during sh during uh, solidification and this has to be compensated using a pattern bigger than the actual dimension of the pattern, uh, actual dimension of the final product. So now this bigger pattern has to be used and the difference is something shrinkage allowance. So that is the allowance given to the pattern. That allowance is added to the pattern. Okay. Now we go with the second elements 
Second elements is something draft or taper elements. So what do you understand by draft? Draft is meant the taper provided by the pattern. See, there is a picture which shows here, okay, a pattern, suppose, see here, so this green portion, suppose I need to make, okay, I need to make something a t-shape something for example I need to make a product something which is shown in the green color here this pattern now so if I make a pattern of this same shape which is vertically uh, vertically I would say it is perpendicular to that two edges or see you know T vertically T that is the two edges are vertical here in the first one and in the second one the two edges are tapered here. So here it is vertical and here it is tapered. So what happens if it is suppose I need to make this T, this component, even though I need to make component of this shape, if I make a pattern like this, while removing out this pattern out of the cavity to fill the mortal metal into the cavity, okay, when I remove this, what happens? This edges may spoil, these edges may spoil. There is a chance that these edges may spoil. Once these edges are spoiled, what happens if you pour the molten metal, your edges will not, when after manufacturing the product of solidification, your edges are not clean. That there is a chance that your edges may spoil or your surface finish is not good. So in order to remove this pattern easily, such that your edges or your walls of the cavity will not get disturbed, we make slightly tapered and this slightly tapered angle is something known as a draft angle you can see in the picture here clearly that there is a draft angle which is the taper given to the edge okay so this is given to the pattern now okay even though we need a vertical edge we are giving slightly taper so that your pattern can be easily removed and this will be filled with the modern metal and then after final product is made you can machine this you can machine this so this allowance is known as taper elements how much it is it is generally two to three degrees your allowance taper elements will not be more than three degrees Three degrees, so it's a very less. Slightly taper angle is produced in order to remove the pattern easily from the mold, so that it will not disturb the walls of the mold cavity. That's all the purpose of the taper here. So this elements is known as taper elements. Then we have something called as draft elements for various metals. What is draft elements? This taper elements and draft elements are same. See, draft or taper are same. But how much it is? So you can see how much it is. It is, suppose if your height, in the case of wooden pattern, if your height is one inch, so what should be the draft angle? Three degrees. As I told you, the maximum angle cannot be more than 3 degrees generally. So that is a 3 degrees. And if your height is 1 to 2 inch, it is 1.5. So for different heights, obviously if your height is more, the taper angle is reduced. That's what it says. So if your wooden pattern has a height that is the depth of 8 to 32 inch, then obviously the draft angle produced is 0.5 degrees. because if you have an angle of 3 degrees where your length is 32 inch so obviously the dimension there is a uh, enormous change in the dimension so as it goes down through a length of 32 inch when it is you know 3 degrees taper angle is produced what happens at the end you have very you know at the top and at the bottom you have much variation in the dimensions obviously that's the reason as your length goes on increasing the angle gets decreases 
okay similarly for metal and plastic patterns are also given so this is what uh, a brief picture of how much the draft elements is to be given machining or finish elements the finish and accuracy achieved in sand casting are generally poor and therefore when the casting is functionally required to be good surface finish or dimensionally accurate this is generally achieved by the subsequent machining so obviously whenever you are producing a metal casting so which is manufactured in sand or you no know, obviously the dimensions uh, the surface will not be so uh, clean or i would say the surface finish is not so accurate now the surface is to be machined so that it is nice it is having good surface finish now in order to do this i need to remove some material when you are making a good surface finish on surf, uh, surface finish the topmost layer has to be machined and it has to be removed out either to a turning process or a shaping process whatever the machining process you use you need to remove some part of the material from the final product which is to be uh, which is manufactured so when you remove this top layer when you machine this top layer obviously some material is removed the size will get reduced suppose you have a length of 100 mm okay now obviously after giving the shrinkage elements you made it 1 102 mm and then uh, you got exact dimension of 100 mm now if you because again the surface finish is not so accurate you again machine it if you remove 1 mm of uh, layer on that then again it comes to 99 so that has to be again compensated now so this additional uh, allowance is to be given additionally we have to add some more quantity to the pattern in order to machine it once it, the final product is ready okay now this allowance which is given for your pattern is machining elements let's see here up to 12 inch it is 0.12 inch it's not per foot again so in the case of shrinkage elements it was see let me go again in the case of shrinkage elements see it is inch per foot 0.125 inch per foot but here it is not like that up to 12 inch you have an elements of 0.12 inch till 12 inch okay up to 12 to 20 inch you have point 20 to 40 inch you have point 25 okay or does it say for example if your dimension is 30 inch and the material the pattern is made of uh, no uh, the model pattern is cast iron then your pattern has to be how much your pattern has to be suppose if it is 30 30 plus 0.25 30.25 this is only for machining additionally you have to give again for shrinkage that is added to this now okay so this is for cast iron and this is for cast steel we have similarly for non ferrous metals aluminum copper and all we have other values so let's see the same one which i have seen in the previous case so instead of 14 mm see i need to manufacture a product of this shape which has a dimensions of 18 mm 14 mm 8 mm now after giving shrinkage allowance 18.2 is the size of or length of the pattern 14.15 is the width of the pattern 8.09 is the height of the pattern and whole dimension is 5.93 inch now again i have to additionally give this machining allowance see this machining allowance has to be added now So what happens? Fourteen point one five. Again, I need to add. How much I need to add? It is point two zero. Twelve to twenty inch. It is point two zero. So what I do is I add point two zero. Similarly for eighteen, I add point two zero. So instead of point eight eighteen point two, now it becomes eighteen point four. Similarly for fourteen point one five, it becomes now fourteen point three five. Eight point zero nine becomes eight point zero nine plus point one two. That is eight point two one. and so this is how 
and obviously the size of the hole will be reduced further size of the hole will not increase obviously it will reduce further okay so this is what the sh um, machining elements is then we have an elements known as distortion or camber elements so what is this distortion elements so when a when the molten metal is poured into the cavity when it gets solidified what happens the shape of the product may slightly distort it will it may undergo change in the shape as shown in this figure okay suppose i need to make an eye section which is shown here the first one okay eye section see there is an eye section so this is a casting which i need to make suppose this is from uh, uh, this is something which is uh, okay eye section and on the top we have seen something different see this eye section is distorted when it is manufactured so it is distorted something you know top surface is you know uh, top layer is bent out something as shown in the figure here so what i do is i'll compensate this so slightly i'll make it distorted the pattern is slightly distorted so that when it distort in the opposite direction when it distort because this uh, the, here it is uh, you know uh, this eye section this uh, lower portion is having less length and the upper portion is having more length obviously that's why it is bent out this way this top portion is bent out okay which is convex outside now what i do is i'll make a concave outside slightly so that when it get distorted it will get the straight one when it get distort if i make it straight it will uh, form a pattern it will form a casting which is convex outside so if i make camber something like this which is convex inside so after distortion i'll get a flat shape that's what it is similarly here okay i need something like this what i do is in order to get this one i'll make this concave so 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 that finally i'll get a right shape so generally this distortion allowance is given for u v t and l shaped patterns not for all suppose if there is any change in shape suppose if it is not u as we see as seen in the previous case you know which is suppose a flat piece like this in this case you don't have any distortion obviously it is a rectangular block now but if it is having something you know l shape or v shape something bent or something here it is a bent out section so obviously there is a chance of distortion this has to be given okay now we also have a look into what are the different types of pattern we have so if it is a block like this see i need to make a final product which is something seen in this picture which is a rectangular section with some projections outside obviously now in order to produce a metal casting like this i don't need many patterns i need a single pattern i can make a single pattern like this and i can use the same pattern to form a cavity in some, in the molding sand now this type of patterns where there are uh, where there is a single pattern then i can call it as a single piece pattern okay single piece usually made from wood see then there is something called as a gated pattern see you can observe in the picture carefully that you know i need to make a casting like this see all these are the castings okay so if i need to produce a casting like this what i need to do is i need to make a cavity in a box suppose i need to make a single casting like this for as shown here so now this has to be used this pattern has to be used of this shape a pattern has to be used and i need to make a cavity and i need to pour molten metal so finally you get the casting suppose 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so no 10 or 16 or shown here so 16 castings were there now so what i do i need to make 16 cavities in 16 boxes 16 mold cavities ought to be there okay and in 16 different boxes i need to uh, prepare 16 risers 16 runners then i have to pour molten metal so this will take a lot of time now instead of that what i do is i'll make a single mold uh, within a single box you know within a cup and drag box what i do is i'll make 
a channel where I pour mortal metal for example I'll pour mortal metal here making one hole so I'll make a channel I'll make a gating system gating system gating system is a channel which takes the mortal metal so I'll, I'll have different mold cavities in within a single molding within a single molding so one two three all the 16 cavities were manufactured uh, are prepared okay and then I have one pouring basin here I pour the mortal metal so what happens this mortal metal will flow, flow through these gates these channels and fills the cavities so then I'll get after solidification I'll get all the 16 castings what I do is this projections I'll remove this gated portion which is you know where the uh, solidification took place this is not my required portion so what I do is what I need is only this this portion of all this this portion this portion what I do is I'll machine this I'll remove this portion this gated portion which is solidified by mortal metal I remove all this I'll finally collect this heads this heads now these shapes these castings 16 castings so what I do is within a single molding I prepared a channel I prepared a gate so that it will carry mortal metal and all the cavities are filled out then I'll remove all this portion I mean I'll machine I'll remove all these portions and finally collect all the 16 castings in this case so where I prepared a gate common gate in system for all the cavities so this type of pattern is known as gated pattern match plate pattern so what is a match plate pattern there is a match plate here see the black one here is a match plate which uh, is used for example I need to manufacture this hollow portion what I do is the upper half is placed in coke box the lower one is placed in the drag box now if I don't have a plate what happens I don't know exactly but there will be a chance of misalignment of this upper one and the lower one upper coke and lower drag the cavities if they are not exactly matched out if there is some offset if there is some disturbance if there isn't exact matching of these two then your final casting may disturb so in order to avoid that what I have I have a thin match plate so these are exactly placed on the two sides of this match plate now this forms a cavity on the coke top one and this forms a cavity on the track in the lower portion so when I remove this pattern and pour the model metal I get exactly the cylindrical shape without any offset otherwise if match plate is not there I don't know exactly whether these two are exactly placed or not there may be small misalignment which may lead to the defect in the casting or dimensional changes in the casting then there is something called a sweep pattern see in this case I need to make something like this a pulley so instead of making a solid pulley like this, this is a cross section of the pulley here this is a section with the hatchet lines you can see clearly so what I do is I'll make some portion of it so this this portion because it is what happens whatever the cross section you're able to see here the hatchet section that is throughout the through 360 degrees it is of same shape now so this portion you can see so if I rotate this portion through 360 degrees I get the pulley so instead of completely forming this pattern which is expensive what I do is I'll make it thin I'll use I lose I'll use the thin plate okay thin plate this is only thin plate now of this section what I do is I'll take this thin plate see in the molding sand and I'll rotate it so I'll rotate it forcing it downwards so when I rotate it forcing downwards this sand will be removed see as you notice here this sand is removed as I move it downwards sand will be removed finally I'll get a cavity like this so I have a cope on the top drag on the bottom so I formed a cavity instead of forming a pattern solid pattern here I used a two dimensional 2d that is a plate here and this plate is rotated through 360 degrees to sweep out the molding sand to form a cavity like this finally and this cavity will be filled with the mortal metal so this type of pattern is a sweep pattern so skeleton pattern so what is a skeleton pattern for example I need to make a huge casting like this of very big dimensions 
Now, why should I use so much material to form a pattern? Suppose if it is completely formed of wood or any other metal, I need to use so much metal, so much volume of metal has to be used, so much volume of wood has to be used. What I do is this outside only outside portion is made out inside this. For example, you, you, you take a section like this, you know, this one. For example, there is a plate like this. This plate I use. And inside this place entirely this is a hollow portion all these plates you know this one plate and this top plate this plate this plate if I use and inside it is completely hollow where material is not there so I can use a pattern like this so that I can save material instead of making uh, using all the material to make a pattern like this what I need is finally a casting like this I need to form a cavity so in order to make a cavity I need to have a pattern so it is not necessary that pattern internally has to be solid because I need a cavity. I need to form a cavity. I can use the skeleton. This outside portion is enough for me to form a cavity. So now this is something called as a skeleton pattern. So what are the different types of patterns we have? Let's have a look again. Single piece pattern, gated pattern, match plate pattern, sweep pattern, skeleton pattern. So in this lecture, we have seen what are the different allowances given for the pattern and what are the different types of patterns. In the coming lectures, we try to understand the other concepts of casting. Okay, This is for today.